actually. As much as I think it might be close, it's going to be Penta actually taking this one 79 to 16 percent. But just to finish off my point here, expectations were very high on LSE. Mm -hmm. And I think they fell short at DreamHack Winter uh, as much as uh, people were expecting them to do quite well. Penta, I think, overachieved. And Bloss's impact on this roster was pretty good. Panix has always been one of the most, I think, underrated and slept on players in Europe. I'm interested to see how this new roster on Penta gels with Bloss coming in. Yeah, I think... Uh... <laughs> Bloss is a, definitely a really interesting player, the way he works. Um, I think he has the potential to be something great, but much like, uh, for example, Cantor Aketi, you need to have the right, you know, setting for him. He needs to be on the right squad that needs to support him in the correct way for him to really shine. That's my opinion on Bloss. I think we've seen yet, or we have yet to see him really uh, play his best game. I don't know how far he can go in terms of uh, player, player growth, but I think he has a lot of potential to climb. Yeah, I mean, it, it was unfortunate for Bloss as well that he got dropped off of Ence's roster in favor of Shate when Shate returned to the team. So, I mean, when you've got somebody like Shate, he's a world champion. He's one of the best players consistently in Europe. For a while, they're considered one of the best anchors, also in probably all of Pro League for quite a while. I know that you called him one of the best Miras in Pro League for a stage there, too. Yeah. Even though Mira is banned more often than not, it's not really much of a surprise that you would you would pick him up. So it, it, there's a bit of, I'm, a, I'm assuming there's a bit of pride at play for Bloss, and we're going to test exactly how prideful he can be and the rest of his team looking to bounce back from a bit of a disappointing result as Penta had stormed out to a 4-1 lead over Empire but let it slip away and ultimately lost the matchup to the Russian team. They're going to have a go against the mixed European team of La Stream, former French squad. And we'll start off with the Operator Bands. So, of course, it will be Penta banning first since they are starting on defense. And they're taking their time with this one, really thinking it through. It's going to be Thatcher off the board. Now, that will make defending certain sites a lot easier. Uh, Jim and uh, Cash specifically are going to be made easier because those walls that you're going to want to uh, bandit trick will be made that much easier to do just that. Montaigne also being taken out an interesting one gone. I mean, Montaigne's been recently very prevalent in the meta. And it's also an operator that Hungry plays an awful lot, and especially an awful lot on Clubhouse. So not really much of a surprise that Lestream would take Monty in terms of his impact on the team. Now, as well, with uh, uh, Penta banning out Thatcher, I, if I remember correctly from all I've seen, that's primarily Alfama's role on the team, so that's definitely going to be a loss of, a loss of utility there. I would imagine that will probably prompt IQ and to somewhat of an extent, Twitch being played out. Rounding out the defense bands will be both the Echo and the Maestro. So the mm. double anchor combo, both operators that are exceedingly strong on this map, particularly Maestro, which will free up the ability to use Mira. And interestingly, we don't see a Hard Breacher ban nor a Maverick ban here, which is quite commonplace. And in fact, you can run the Maverick if you don't have a Thatcher on your team to be able to take out some of those gadgets and basically prevent mute jammers and bandit tricking on the other side of things, and they will waste no time on attack as Lestream picking Maverick immediately. Ace is locking him in. All three hard breachers being brought out, and that stands to reason on a map like Clubhouse. And uh, as you stated, having no Thatcher, you're definitely going to need the Maverick if you want to attack those top floor bomb sites. And it will also just make general so or hard destruction downstairs that much easier because you have that excess. Majority players being able to open up those reinforced walls. It's an interesting thing that you don't see every day, to be honest. Now, Penta going downstairs first. Not a huge surprise. Again, as we talked about, this is, I think, generally considered to be the best bomb site on Clubhouse as it stands. One of the lesser changed ones from the previous build of this map. And the overall setup is pretty standard fare here so far. Nothing too shocking. Another thing uh, to note about this bomb site is that you don't often see roamers. Uh, usually people will just play everyone downstairs in the site waiting for their opponents. And you could set up some traps, maybe some, le some lesion or some capcan traps upstairs to try and slow things down. But often all five players are found in the bomb site or in the adjacent rooms on this particular site. It's one of the rare bomb sites that that actually is true. Looks like we will be having some roamers, though, in this case, as uh, Jaeger starts moving his way up to the lounge area. 
It's one of those things where uh, if you roam on Clubhouse and you don't do your proper job of clearing, that it causes a major yeah. problem. You know, it, one of the most vivid memories of, of Clubhouse, at least prior to the rework, was the Rogue EG match, where EG was roaming and Rogue did not drone accordingly. Was it Adam? No, no, it was, it was, uh, it was EG Rogue. Oh, oh, okay. I thought we were confusing. Uh, no, no. Bad. I mean, Adam. Adam did have that legendary roam up top. Actually, first kill also going to go to Ace. He's going to take out enemy. As the bandit who was playing down in garage gets picked off. This is a beautiful entry from LSE. So what I was speculating was that if you don't do your due diligence and drone out the roamers, you end up getting bitten. And you're going for an execute, and those roamers can retake quite effectively, providing you don't have somebody dedicated to flank watch. The stream though will enter very well and pinch both Sir Boss and Enemy, effectively putting a ton of pressure onto the Penta Anchors with a minute and a half to go. That is not a lot of, that, that's not much time wasted by the two roamers there to try and hold map control for Penta. Yeah, so Lestream clearly doing their due diligence here and actually having a full clear. Going live. Only half the round left to go. These drop downs starting to get opened up. The stream are in a pretty a dominant located. position right now, but they could still lose it out as uh, this basement typically plays out in a heavy bottleneck fashion. And if you execute poorly with your players, you could lose quite a lot of them Reloading. for free on the side of the attack. Uno in the main hallway, gonna be shooting that camera. He's just doing his best to disrupt armory play, and he has done a lot of damage to the Legion. Alfama will take out Blaz, leaving just Ravon and Hungry. In the two versus five, but there you go, Vaughn, the first kill for his team. I'm actually very surprised with how aggressive Penta was going to get there as Aces picks up his uh, second kill on Hungry. And Revan, with just a tiny fraction of his life, will get punished by Uno playing on that Ash at the bottom of the main stairs. That seems to be quite an easy round for Lestream to start things off. Very surprising that Penta put up so little of a fight, especially when you're on church and you're on armory or arsenal downstairs, because typically that ends up being the site where things take a little bit longer. Yeah. It takes quite a bit for the attackers to be able to line up all of their chips on the board. And Well, there you have it. So, first defense successful for... Or, well, for, for the attacking team. Lestream managing to get a pretty um, concise clear when they actually went to the bomb site. Those two roamers being taken out with ease is probably what uh, made that so easy for Lestream. I mean, if you look at if you look back at how they actually executed that, um, they were kind of all over the place when attacking the bomb site itself. Um, they didn't have any, you know, clear objective, I think, a little bit spread out. At the same time, though, the setup really worked in their favor. Um, Penta had some interestingly, uh, interesting missed reinforcements and some overexposed position play, especially in the um, armory side of things. And on top of that, of course, losing those two players early on. I mean, there's not much else to say other than free control for the stream. Not really too surprised to see Penta going somewhere else, but I wonder how much this go. defense is going to be hurt by the loss of an Echo and a Maestro on their side of things. Mirror is obviously going to be a pretty big help here. I would imagine that Bloss is probably going to put down his second black mirror at the top of red, and that's exactly what it looked like. Once again, Penta is going to commit quite a few bodies off-site to try and round out this defense, which is pretty standard for CCTV. You usually have somebody presumably an ACOG playing inside of Garage. If you don't have an ACOG, we've seen a lot of times that there's been either a Legion or a Jaeger that's played in there. Now, if you look on Penta Sports' lineup, well, there's no uh, there's no ACOG on the board. So the body that's going to be playing in Garage will indeed be Hungry's Legion to try and keep everybody at bay. Enemy's just going to miss this buck and engage with Aces as they tussle through the window. Rise obviously been alerted to the Jaeger's position, and there's a pinch opportunity here. The wild card is going to be Revan, who's playing inside of Moto and can sneak up, really, at any point. Trying to put pet pressure on Revan. Inside of Blue is the Buck. Rise, who will open up the wall and then push in through Church. Uno downstairs as well, and look at this. Once again, another great start for LSE on their entry. Just seeing the pulse for a second, and Rise's hesitation almost misses him the kill, but he'll pick it up and clean up what little was left of that pulse while taking about 50 damage in the process. 
Uh, Penta's Roamer is having no luck so far in this match. We're still early in, but the stream are doing a great job of droning for their roam clear and uh, executing those players one after another. You can see the Jaeger of enemy actually in the main entrance. I'm not sure he was spotted by that drone, to be honest. He might have gone, gotten away with this, but no. no it seems as though the attack is aware of his location, just not entirely sure where specifically. But it's going to do it. not matter at all, in all likelihood. Uno going with the wide peak, and he will get a pretty easy kill there onto enemy, extending the lead in this round for the stream. Once again, it's taken a little bit longer this time around, but Lestream have been finding a huge amount of success and really no contest from Penta to be able to stop them. And it looks like it, they might even be lined up to pick up a third kill with Hungry playing on the rafters upstairs, but it's a run out from the bandit of Sir Boss to try and pick off Uno, a big gamble that works out in Lestream's favor. Penta finds themselves down yet another number. But there you have Hungry picking away through those little slots in the metal rafters above. Hungry down, it'll leave Bloss, Penta's newest addition, replacing longtime member Panix. If there's a comeback happening, he's got 30 seconds to make it work. He'll take down Hicks. Uno being reset means that three members of Lestream are sitting on 50 HP or less. Rise gets the kill onto Hungry, and the breadcrumb trail of Goo Mines will get hit as the stream begins to circle in. But Bloss is holding a tight angle, tosses out a C4, looking to connect, he'll get Rise a double from Bloss as he's trying to hold off and hold the attackers at bay. A third, but he can't pull it out. He'll grab one, but Uno finishes him off. Absolutely torrid pace from Bloss, set up with as many tools as he can. But ultimately, it's the stream, just having way too many bodies for Penta to contend with. So very close to a clutch there for Blaz. So nice try to him, but at the same time, I gotta again point a finger at Penta's really lackluster roamers um, and their anchor play being far too aggressive. Sir Boss, I understand you wanna you know regain the, the man advantage um, and sometimes aggressive plays are the right way to do that, but I feel as though if Blaz had just had one less body to contest with there, he might have been able to clutch it out. And that, again, comes down to two players getting picked off early on for free on Penta's side. And then from there, the anchor, the rest of the anchors just kind of in unnecessarily aggressive positions. Um, so something I think, I think that uh, Penta really needs to shore up, especially on a map like Clubhouse. I mean, maybe they're trying to be unpredictable, but... Clearly, Listream is predicting the play that Penta is giving us. So, time for some changes, Penta. Let's see what you can do if you uh, just get a little bit more, either either more passive or have more success on the roamers. I mean, but the, it doesn't seem like that's likely to happen given the way these last two rounds have played out. Listream are just too good, uh, too efficient at that roam clear. Welcome back to us. Hello. Uh, I believe we might need a rehost, mm -hmm. but still trying to determine exactly what. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I think the big story so far, like you said, has, has really been what is going on with this roam. Yeah. There has been no support for these roamers. Number one, every single pick that's happened from Penta, there's been no refrag potential. Mm -hmm. The Pulse downstairs inside of Moto, nobody there to possibly trade him off. The Jaeger, maybe? I, I mean, that's why we saw Sir Boss run out from the site. Is that He's trying to, you know, very delayed refrag, but still a refrag. He's trying to get his team back in it. Right. Those aggressive plays are not working out, though, clearly, and I, I feel like what needs to happen is Penta needs to change their pace a little bit. Instead of diving deeper into the aggro, just maybe reel it back in, you know, start uh, feeling out the other end of the spectrum. How much of this do you think is is uh, attacker versus defender sided? Because we, we note this we note this on basically every time Clubhouse appears. Statistically, over the last season and over the last round, uh, couple months of competitive play, far and away the most defender sided map in the entire pool. But every single hard breacher is available for the attackers, and Echo and Maestro are absent for the defenders. How much do you think that narrows the gap to make this so the conventional wisdom being the defense needs to win is not really applicable in this circumstance? Well, Thatcher and Monty are both, as you said, target bans, and uh, Maestro and Echo are both universal. So the thing that, that really strikes to me is that you know those two operators are so good no matter who you are what team you're on. I mean, we, we have standout performers like Redeemer, for example. He's good at, he's amazing at both. You know, he's one of those names that pops into mind when you think of Maestro and Echo. But at the same time, he every team on defense 
not necessarily needs, but really benefits from having a Maestro or an Echo. And yeah, I think the lack of those is definitely going to hurt. I do, however, think that uh, playing on Clubhouse should be, you should be winning these defenses either way. Right. Um, if it were up, if, if, if I'm looking at it from the perspective of Clubhouse plus the lack of these two operators, I'm thinking to myself, the anchors are hurting quite a lot because they don't have the extension of information that the Evil Eyes and Yokai drones afford you. And on top of that, they're losing two bodies every round. So they're already limited on, on information and guns that can point at angles and cover them. And, you know, the, the bands, you know, reinforce that. It's, uh, I think that's put up pretty... I think that's putting it pretty pretty well. Um, and then, I mean, as you mentioned, once again, not having any real connectivity to the actual site means that you're basically putting yourself at a permanent 4v5, 3v5, etc. And even if the defense still has a small advantage, even with Echo and Maestro Band, and the fact that every single Hard Breacher is available, and as you noted, both the Thatcher and the Montane are direct counter bands for both of these teams to a certain extent, uh, it's just, it's one of those things where Penta's not doing themselves any favors. That's the big yeah. thing. And Lestream's entry, which was quite weak yesterday against Ents overall, it looks like the people that are tasked with getting the frags on Lestream are being supported today when they weren't yesterday. Though how much of that is, it's not really that hard to support them when your opponents are playing a little bit sloppy. Yeah, so I, to speak. Sloppy is is a good way uh, to describe Penta's place uh, so far. We are going to be getting back into the match very very soon, um, but uh, I, I think I think again, all Penta really needs to do is just reel it in a little bit. You know, bring it back to base, bring it back to center, so that uh, they aren't overextending themselves, and so that the anchors can be a little bit more comfortable with the extra support, so they don't have to jump from angle to angle to angle. I mean, if you look at, I think uh, Blaz's uh, life in the in the previous round is a great example. He was covering three different angles by himself when he knew where all his opponents were coming from. And he was doing his darndest. He almost got it, actually. Uh, Uno came from an off angle where, when he, somewhere he wasn't expecting, obviously because playing Ash, he can rush around. But um, that's something that you should never put on one player. Um, and again, just warm bodies with barrels pointing in you know directions. Defender, that's all you need to change that. I can say this with absolute certainty. The stream winning two attacking rounds right off the bat is going to put them in the driver's seat for the rest of the match. Because when they go to defense, if they're not making the same mistakes, which I'm uh, hopeful it's for their sake that they won't, uh, that, that, that's going to be a situation where they're going to start walking away with it. We saw the same thing in the Red Devils Immortals match two days ago. Once Immortals got to defense, it just started, it just started happening because they weren't making the same mistakes. Yeah, Mortals was actually perfect on defense in that yeah. matchup. Red Devils won three on their defensive yeah, half, but that was with Hibon abandoned. And it's very easy to point at a singular hard breacher because Maverick isn't technically a hard breacher in the same sense. He I, is, I feel, but he isn't. I feel like we need a. I feel like we need a new term to describe it because he's this hybrid hard breacher. He's a hybrid breacher. He can. He is a hybrid breacher. We can. That's that's a very good way of putting it. Is well, you that, said it, so. Well, I mean, the the thing with the thing with aces on Maverick is that, yeah, he can he can get hatches, which is going to be probably the most that you use him for. But outside of that, he's really not going to be tasked with opening up an entire wall necessarily. Aces on the drone is going to catch two bodies from Penta once again. Michael playing a loose roam game and waiting and look at that's a freebie. Aces walks right in and takes out enemy. A little bit of a ceremonial bounce in his step. Once again, Penta loses a body with no potential to trade that off. Okay, so Penta... You will hear <laughs> Penta were on 100% aggression in the, in the previous couple rounds, and they've dialed it back to 75%. I'm gonna need you guys to just go ahead and dial it back to 25, maybe, maybe 10. Just dial it back. Just dial it back. Just dial it back. You know, enemy did not need to be there. That's a free kill. That's a free kill not just at this level of play, but that's a free kill It, you know, like, high diamond ranked. I mean, if somebody sits on that staircase on that angle, it's a really easy pre-fire, I gotta say. It's one of those things where you can maybe put a roamer in the blue side over by maybe Oil Pit, where Aces just was, over towards the over towards the blue stairwell, and then have a rotate into Church, which it actually yeah. looks like they do have access to. No, they've actually sealed it off. Okay. A second kill's gonna come out for the stream onto Revan. That was the Legion playing in an area underneath Kitchen Hatch, trying for the impact trick. It does not look like he'll get it if we can just go up to the kitchen and see. 
No, so the impact trick fails, and Revan himself fails as well, as Marcius says, no thank you. That's very um, difficult to find for Penta. So right now, the stream in a really great position. Uh, same thing that we saw from the last time they attacked this bomb site, And uh, they have direct access to Arsenal, as well as having taken out the main Arsenal anchor. There is somebody who has taken up that position, though. That looks to be Blaz, and he's uh, doing his best from the bomb to deny the push down, the drop down, and through the hallway. But Uno is setting himself up perfectly. We've also got the gas canister starting to go out there to deny that very same push, but he's got to juggle that for the remaining 40 seconds. I like how you said that he set himself up perfectly, at which he went to drone and started taking damage from the bandit batteries. Perfectly taking 20 damage. Absolutely calculated. I'm not faulting you. I thought it was, I thought it was comedic. <laughs> I thought you did a great job. ACOG from Blas all the way down at the boxes inside of Arsenal, looking towards the bottom of the main stairs. Cannot connect onto the thermite of Hicks. Rise will put some pressure on. Instead, as Aces does find the ACOG, but it's a double kill for Sir Boss. Eliminating Aces and Rise. Three to two, Hungary on a last man stand. He takes out Uno. As Alfama will need to cover Hicks getting the plant down. Alfama with that limited magazine inside of the Type 89. We'll pick off one, and that will leave Sir Boss to try and come in in a post plant, taking Hicks down, but Alfama from above is in a great position to just simply hold on and persevere. So will prompt Sir Boss to have to run up the main stairs and try and evade any claymores that may have been set down. It's gonna be a tense moment here. Waiting for any kind of audio cues as Alfama will now rotate and completely concede above, prompting the Jaeger to have to drop down, and he'll go for the disable, putting himself up in a position. If Alfama does not know the sound cue, it could be particularly problematic, but all Alfama needs to do is hug these bomb cases quite well, and around the corner he'll go, wasting as much time as possible, but also finishing it off with a wonderful body shot to the torso of Sir Boss, and that will be a stream on Clubhouse, taking three attacking rounds in a row. So, um, in a on a normal map, uh, I think on a balanced map, something like uh, Bank or Coastline, you would say, all right, um, having won three rounds in a row, that's really good for a stream, not only in terms of statistically, but also, you know, in terms of morale. But uh, on, a ba on a map like Clubhouse, even though the half is only, well, we're only halfway through it, um, there's still potential for Penta to get an even, you know, 3-3 three, three here. Even though that is the case, technically speaking, on this map, because of how defender-sided it is, Lestream has, without a doubt, even if they lose the remaining three rounds of this half, they have won the half. They, they're in a great position right now. Um, and that last round, again, so close for Penta. Could defender, you imagine defender, if they had maybe one more player to help support in that uh, post plan? Maybe somebody to cover the tunnel? While Sir Boss goes for the uh, disable, maybe, but no, they lost that player on the main stairs due to unnecessary aggression. Um, Pentage needs to—they need to dial it back. I really wish this is one of the circumstances in which a replay system would be exceptional that we could possibly pull up. But mm. uh, I really wish we had have seen what Revan was doing to fail at the impact trick, but also yeah, lose his board. life. I don't yeah. know if there had been a pre-open spot maybe next to, to the hatch by Revan or by somebody on his team, and Alfama just Attackers very wisely anticipated the lesion coming, maybe even pre-fire him. I don't know if that's something that we can give praise to Alfama for, or if we can give uh, a little bit of scorn towards Revan for, but I would have liked to have I would have liked to have seen that actually firsthand. Alas, I'll have to wait for his possible perspective at some point. Aces on the Maverick so far through four rounds and being used quite effectively to take out the soft hatches as well as any possible poke holes that they need for the rest of their team. His application is going to be a bit different this time as Penta's fourth defense will be upstairs instead of Cash and CCTV, which they failed at on that second round attempt. So we've been talking a lot about how Penta has been way too aggressive, giving away opportunities to Lestream, but we also have to give credit to Lestream for seizing said opportunities. Often, you'll have those opportunities presented by teams, and the opposite or their opponent Attackers will be uh, incapable of actually, you know, taking full control as a result. And uh, that's not the case here for Lestream. They are really seizing everything presented to them. So you got to give them credit for that. Here we go, five on site. As you can see, uh, full anchor going on here for Penta. Sure. They're not even in the garage. They sure aren't roaming this time. <laughs> yeah, they really, <laughs> they really let go of that whole roam thing. There's their big old no there. Here's the big issue though, because they have so many bodies on site. 
they don't have any map control outside of those four walls around them, and they've just lost one of them into security. Mm. Which was taken out quite successfully by the Thermite of Hicks as Aces pokes some holes out and could actually be vulnerable to a run out from Garage. It did look like maybe one member of Penta was trying to push over in that direction, but no, that's not the case. You can see that there's no intention to push through the server wall. They're just trying to make sure that that rotation is not accessible to the defenders. It's a risky game that Aces is playing here, but he is clearly aware of the rules and is playing it very well, I have to say. Doing a good job of just scaring his opponents and denying server. Now, there's that run out being set up right now by Blaz actually in Garage. Rise is going to get the first kill of the round onto Sir Boss and Uno working his way in here. He was actually very exposed for a moment there, but manages to stay alive. There's a human accordion going on at the top of Red Stairs. All of Revan, Enemy, and Hungry playing in one angle and very susceptible to an Ash breaching round, blowing open the wall and exposing at least two of them. All of the while, not enough presence to stop this plant from going down and Hicks will get the diffuser off successfully. The second round in a row for Lestream. There will be a tussle now to try and wrestle the site control away from the attackers. Blas will start things off with Revan here, and an excellent post plan is shaping up for Penta. A vault out of the CCTV window could possibly net Rise, who's playing in a position, but he's got Hicks to pick up two! And there comes the run out with the skeleton key, and Rise will prevail, leaving Blas once again in a 1v1 position to try and clutch out this site. C4 over the shoulder of Hicks. The Thermite cannot connect. He knows that he's got a quarter of the time, and Hicks will finish it off, and Lestream is perfect through four. Unsure if Blas would have been able to get the kill and then also get back in time as a three armor to grab the Diffuser as well for his team. So, could have been an impactless frag there, Michael. But still, that's a 4 nothing on attack for Lestream. It looked like we might have seen a comeback again from Penta. It almost seemed like the uh, reserve strategy they were pulling out, the complete opposite of what they were doing previously, might have worked out. In the post plant, they started racking up those kills, but it just wasn't enough. And uh, it's it's a shame because Penta always seemed to be there while well, they're on the heavy extreme. I mean, passive is all well and good and okay, fair. That's what we were asking them to be, a little bit more passive. But at the same time, there was C4 accessible, you know? Deny the plant. You can you can always just throw it and deny the plant outright. You don't have to retake into a post. I mean, it's just a curious way that we saw that being played. Another thing to note, I mean, one of those C4s that Penta had in their, at their disposal was roaming. Blaz on the Mira. He was nowhere near the site. Why not put him on the Mira window facing into Cash from Cash Stairs? Then the plant doesn't happen in the first place. You know, and, and that makes the stream's lives so much more difficult. I don't think that they could have been successful on a second plant attempt. If they had lost their initial planter, Listream probably would have stumbled and fallen in that round, but not Five the case. Remaining. No denial there from Penta. Entirely too passive. Ah, it's weird. It's weird to say after all the aggression they were showing us earlier. I was more perplexed by not having anybody in Garage or even having somebody playing inside of Construction before falling off. Now, Construction can be quite a very... Uh, a vulnerable place to play, especially with how swift Lestream has been on their entry. It's been a very fast pace for LSE to be able to get in and pinch you. And not only would you lose a body in construction if you didn't gamble correctly, but then you'd also lose control of construction as well. I don't know what's going on with... Uh, he's not looking... It's a spectator bug. I'm pretty sure he's looking at the breach or the uh, wall that looks towards construction. Continue your point. It's confusing to say the least, but anyway, I was uh, I was going to say from uh, yeah, it was a spectator bug. Yeah, it was. So from from LSE side of things, they're able to get map control very fast, whether Penta is contesting it or not. I can understand the hesitation to put more bodies off site or on site, but ultimately you're still going to need some kind of map control. The solution is not hey, let's just keep everybody on site. The solution is hey, let's maybe be in a position where we can refrag and trade off a teammate if they do get lost. Well, I think on site's fine, but they were on one site. Not well, the three, other. three of them were on one yeah. hero window. <laughs> they needed to hold control of the site, and they didn't do that. Anyway, moving on to this round, as you can see, the attackers have managed to get control of blue pretty quickly, actually, and that's that's very surprising. Again, Penta maybe not flexing enough muscle here and uh, losing control of a very important location. Blue is going to allow for easy crossfires into both Arsenal and Church. 
Uno and Sir Boss in a, in a uh, game of chicken at the moment to see who's going to blink first. An epic staring contest, I suppose, would have been a better metaphor in that place, but uh, it's too late. I've already said it, so. It's gonna be the Jaeger, though, who moves away, and Uno knows that the other three speed is there, and it's Alfama from above as a bit of a haphazard rotate from Sir Boss gets him caught in the crosshairs of the control that LSD has, and Alfama's gonna find a second as Revan jumps in front of his gun. As Hungry tries to get off the Toxic Babe, thank goodness for Uno, as LSD will say. Hicks, a team kill on Aces so long, but it is an almost perfect round as Alfama absolutely pulverizing with Hicks picking up a team kill, but doesn't really matter. It's five nothing LSE. And was that a bit of frustration that yeah. we saw in the chat there from Penta with the singular K? Yeah, I think it was a, it was a clear little bit of frustration there for, uh, for Penta. They're definitely not in a good spot. I mean, five zero that really speaks for itself. Um, again, in that round, I saw the same thing. Okay. It's clear as day that over the cash defense and basement defense that we just saw, Penta have realized they were being too aggressi aggressive in the first three rounds. And they said, hey, guys, get passive. The problem, <laughs> the problem is they got too passive somehow, and they're losing control of chunks of the site. Crucial locations yeah, like blue or like construction, not contesting them at all or just if you're going to lose control of cash room upstairs as well in the previous previous round then have something a tool like c4 to make it hurt when the attackers go for it those tools are not being fully utilized or the control shouldn't be lost in the first place for penta this is it it's now less a case of we're losing players off site for no reason now more a case of we're losing chunks of the site for no reason. Attackers have located a bomb. And by we, I mean Penta from their perspective. Ten seconds right. to insertion. Come and uh, Lestream's fragging potential so far. And I know that kills are not the be all and end Attackers all of the team's the performance, but if you're getting Attackers out fragged on every single round, it, it speaks to a good use of utility, it speaks to good supporting and droning, etc. Alfama coming in was the least tested of all the players. And the one that I think most people were the most confused by is, you know, he played on that Supremacy roster that failed to get a victory with him on it, that was then relegated, and was actually the first team to be relegated of the EU, NA, and Latin America regions. He steps in into a supporting role in which he has the least experience out of the other four members of this team, so to speak. He's been performing quite well today, and it's been a great performance on a role that doesn't necessarily require him to be picking up kills in spades, but he's got six so far. Well, a lot of the kills that he got in the last round were thanks to the crossfire that we talked about earlier. Oh, some early action here. Sabas trying his best to roam upstairs, but will be shut down by the excellent drone work and fragging of the stream. And once again, enemy was there, tasked with refragging, but he was too far off, and either Lestream entered, unbeknownst to enemy, or enemy put himself in a position where he was not coordinated well with the TV. Ultimately, he's gonna take down one, and it's a great rotate from Blas as he picks up Rise, but I don't think they realize that Uno has been downed. All for naught, though, as immediately Aces jumps in and takes out Blas, meaning that Penta now, who are, need we remind you, defending the basement with three bodies upstairs, leaving just Hungry and Revan on site. And even then, Revan was playing on the main stairs, far off of both of the sites, aggressively enough to get back when need be. If there'd been an answer from Lestream on towards those main stairs, Revan finding himself in the crosshairs of one of the members of LSE, that would have meant Hungry would need to win a 1v4 to keep this round from going perfect into LSE's favor. We're inches away from uh, in a nice. perfect half here from Lestream and yeah, Penta really struggling again. This time it's with the Roamers. Uh, too money and too aggressive. No fallback at all. Great roam clear from Lestream. Ravon, though, able to bring it back just a little bit. That's great use of his goo mines to uh, trigger his peak and pre-fire. Pretty easy win for him there. You need to have some kind of way to bounce back, and uh, that's Revan's response. The peak from Uno, though, not winning the fight. Revan with an actual drop shot, it looks like, just there. Did he just get drop shot? He just got drop shot. That does not happen very often these days. And in the hallway, both of the Penta, Penta players are doing a great job of holding up this attack, evening us out to a two-on-two. -two. The pre-fire from Hicks will be mostly into the wall, and Hungry will secure an easy kill there. Alfama now hero of the last round, and... It's gonna have to be the hero of this round again. 
if uh, his team wants to get the win. Flashes into blue, pushing into church. Sees an enemy inside Moto, but cannot win the fight. Ravon, some excellent gunplay there. And Penta get their first round. It took until their final defense before we switch sides here, but Penta does walk away with it, and it was still quite a harrowing experience for them. They did not make that round easy. An excellent 2v4 swap down to a 2v1 on their side of things after three offsite players have been felled in the first two minutes of the round. The big MVP of what we just saw there was the camera at the bottom of main stairs. You saw the red glowing light as Alfama pushed into church. That information being relayed to both Revan and Hungary, and that was the Legion able to capitalize upon it. Many teams will open up the floor uh, above, by the main stairs and shoot the camera before they even go down to the bottom of main stairs, mm -hmm. uh, before they even need to see it. So that's a little bit backwards there Back for the uh, stream, just a little oversight. I mean, we've noticed it a couple rounds actually before where that camera will get valuable information before being shot. Every time Uno would push down the main stairs as Ash and he'd be at the bottom, he'd have to shoot it manually, but definitely something that they can avoid. However, you know, in most situations, it's not gonna matter. In that situation, it really did. Definitely a big mistake for the stream. However, it has only cost them one round. And they're still just two rounds away from winning coming out of the first half. So, and now they get to go into defense of Clubhouse, of all maps. I mean, you got to be so comfortable here. Now, it looks as though they will be roaming as well. They're not going to be the ones to relent here on the aggression. At least Uno is playing pretty aggressively by the strip club right now. But, uh... Potential for him to still fall back to say. I'm very interested to see what the stream is capable of doing on defense and this aggressiveness from Penta on attack that did get a little bit subdued until that very final round of church that we just witnessed. Mm. It could work out quite well for them on attack. One of the biggest follies that attackers have on Clubhouse is utility management, especially if there's a hard breacher band, the ability to get your ducks in a row, AKA take care of the hatches, take care of the walls, etc., and so on can be very difficult for teams, which is why we'll often see a church plant that will go down with only five seconds left in the round after you've controlled blue and you can help cut off the rotate all the way over from the main stairs, which is where Aces is playing. If Penta's aggressive enough, they can take map control quite quickly, but they're dithering for the moment. It's still half of the team on drones as a minute will go by. They've got chunks of control here, and uh, the stream has it looks like entirely falling back to the site. Though they are in a position to flank from the blue, looks like. At the top of blue stairs, you have Rise as Jaeger just waiting for his opportunity to rush the flanks of uh, Penta. There's good potential for that as no one's actually watching it right now. Looks like Ravon actually is. He's on his drone inside of Lounge and waiting for an aggressive push. The pre-fire there from Rise will give away his intent. And now Ravon will be much more diligent. Only set of smokes on Penta's side of things will come in Capitao's hands, so Hungary will need to stay alive for at least long enough to be able to get both of those down. And of course, aiding him will be the asphyxiating bolts, both of which can cut off two areas in which Lestream would need to rotate in Attackers have dropped for bolts that can greatly aid a plant and be able to help you get it down, especially in a site like Moto, where there's usually going to be one or two angles that you know you're going to be coming from. Aces watching the Moto hatch, anticipating a possible drop. Sir Boss over top of it will go to Drone, but there's nobody from LSE that is going to take the bait, or rather from Penta that's going to take the bait. Try to jump into LSE's waiting arms. Alfama still has his back right now, turned to blue, shotgun in hand, waiting for a close range fight as Sir Boss gets a mark on the drone. And the action will surely begin. So we only have 30 seconds left. Could be an easy flank there, but Sir Boss is actually gonna be felled by the C4. The second one could get the kill. And yes, indeed it will. Well placed by Alfama. Good communication skills on the defensive side. Hicks also gets the shotgun blast to the face of enemy, putting the stream in the driver's seat. And one for Alfama means it's a two versus five with the dying seconds of the round coming in. Hungary gets his team's first kill, but it's not gonna matter as aces and rise clean up shop. And that's it, six to one. We have one more round before the stream gets the win. And we're just barely halfway through this. Best of my knowledge, we've only seen one 7 1 over the course of this season. It came in the first week of Latin America in the Black Dragons Red Devils game, mm. in which it was uh, on Oregon, and Black Dragons won 
out quite well on attack and then transitioning over to defense. This would be our second. Still haven't seen a 7-0. We might be able to see one later today, depending on what happens with Secret G2, Mocket Chaos, or Ents Empire. But hmm. obviously with one on the board for Penta, that's not going to happen here. CCTV Cache is just as suitable a defensive site for Clubhouse as the church. Though statistically, does get won by the attackers more often than church on that bottom floor. So going to give a bit of an advantage to Penta that they didn't have last time around. Penta's lineup is going to look almost identical, if not actually fully identical, can. after no six pick is utilized by them to change things up. I am curious to see what the stream is going to do with Ace's castle play. You'd imagine probably on Windows and trying to cordon off security would be my guess. I'm thinking maybe one on the construction window so that roamers can roam by construction and master. That would also make sense why they've brought Hicks with the mute, because you can it makes the roaming of, by a master a little bit easier. Looks like they're also going to be roaming downstairs as he puts one by the main entrance that's going to allow anybody to roam well, by the main entrance or in the stock or bar area a lot more easily. I also like this rotation hole. There you go. So they've set up their own little circuit on the bottom floor. They're putting a mirror window facing into garage. I absolutely love this uh, out of the box uh, or outside of the box setup from the stream. It puts heavy emphasis on C4 from below, of which they very likely have two or three. They've also got the rotate inside of stock. I couldn't see if the kitchen hatch was also opened up. Rise with a spawn peak will get droned out, and there are two very angry members of Penta who are both hungry for the kill as they were close enough to possibly take out the Jaeger of Rise, who with a massive lead for his team could have possibly gambled on an early spawn peak. Hungry will be droning in the Zofia of Bloss, waiting to see if Rise has peeled off or not. He's no longer under surveillance. But Uno will need to get out of there in an awful hurry. As you see, Ravon using his blowtorch silently to open up one half of that CCTV wall and also claims the bandit batteries on the other side of it, which will allow easy access for enemy to be able to put the exothermic charge on the top and prevent any bandit tricking. It also means that until that wall gets opened up, it's going to be very difficult for the stream to be able to rotate knowing that they can get shot away at their feet. Easy exothermic charge there for Penta, and he gets that wall open, which means that the rotation in server is effectively Attack cut off the for the defense. However, that is not something that they are keen to utilize, it seems, as they are positioned mainly to defend Garage and downstairs. A free kill there for Blaz, and I'm sure he's very grateful to Rise for handing that to him. And because of that, Uno will fall back to lounge. And this is what we talked about earlier. He's got that, ooh, what a shot from Uno. Hungry goes down, and... So much utility lost for Penta in that Capital as well. The C4 still in hand for Uno. He can still deny the Diffuse Plant right above him. Excellent play there onto Hungry and a, almost a once in a lifetime shot as I couldn't tell from our perspective if that entire wall had been opened up enough to be able to see all the way down. So your only set of smokes for Penta will be lost with a minute remaining in match point in favor of Lestream who had a bit of a difficult matchup yesterday against Enz but have bounced back against Penta. And they'll organize themselves, waiting for Penta to push in through the opening into Cash. Enemy gets down and the Diffuser will be dropped as Blaz is there to prevent to possible C4. Just waiting patiently. He's not oh, no. able to get all of his shots onto Uno as he'll open up a soft wall and try to concuss the bandit waiting to peek in as Penta's going to need to set enemy back up. 30 seconds left, and with the match on the line, Penta will try to stave off their second loss in just two days. Hicks SMG 11 in hand. He gets shredded by Sir Boss, but Alfama pulls out the sidearm. He'll get one, looking for a second. Not enough damage. His rotate will get cut off by Revan, but a C4 tossing out from Uno will not hit its target. Ace is in bad shape, as he will need to get back up. As Uno is the only man close enough. Trying to deny the plant with impacts in hands. He's going to open it up and seize one, but can he connect? Oh! Aces will get enemy, but Attack Sir attacking. Boss gets the diffuser down successfully. Revan is down, so it's the only the Ash upright to try and hold off his team. He gets spotted, and there's Sir Boss picking off Uno, which will leave Aces in a clutch scenario in a 1v1. Diffuser down, a pre-fire will give away his position inside of Cash Room. He sees the Ash! Aces doesn't know that Revan is down, and he has a clear path to get that diffuser. This is Lestream right now, fully aware that they have just taken the match. And it's going to be 7-1 for LSE is Revan. Bleeds out Uno getting credited with the final kill and a hell of a bounce back from LSE to take this 7-1.
And by bounce back, you mean a bounce back off of the loss from la yesterday. But this match alone, there was no bouncing. It was a clear-cut victory here. I mean, Penta barely put up a fight, it felt like it sometimes there. Uh, they did manage to win the one round. So credit where credit is due, that was a really, I mean, I think that was a pretty one-sided round as well. Penta did a good job of defending there. There were a couple rounds on the defensive half from Penta where they very